Good evening. Tonight we examine a milestone in defense technology and its broader implications for military strategy, industrial policy, and international security, the first flight of Enduro Industries YFQ-44A, a jet-powered, uncrewed aircraft designed to operate alongside manned fighters as part of the U.S. Air Force's Collaborative Combat Aircraft Initiative. The demonstration flight, carried out in California, showcased semi-autonomous flight control, push-button landing capability, and a path toward scaled production, developments officials say are accelerating the Pentagon's vision of distributed, networked air power. The YFQ-44A, nicknamed Fury by parts of the press, emerges from a rapidly changing defense marketplace where traditional prime contractors compete with Silicon Valley-backed startups. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program is meant to field loyal wingmen, uncrewed jets that fly with manned aircraft to sense, shoot, and act in concert, while lowering risk to human pilots. Multiple companies, including Enduro and General Atomics, are developing prototype aircraft under Air Force contracts awarded in 2024. Reuters reported that Enduro's prototype flew in late October 2025, a step that Pentagon officials described as demonstrative of the accelerating pace of industry innovation. According to Enduro and the Air Force, the Fury flight demonstrated semi-autonomous flight capabilities. Enduro executives said the aircraft could manage its own flight controls and throttle adjustments during the sortie and could be commanded to land with a single human input. In plain terms, the prototype showed that the aircraft can navigate the immediate demands of flight without a human physically manipulating flight sticks in real time, though human supervisors remain integral to mission management and decision authority. This distinction between supervised autonomy and full autonomy is central to both operational acceptance and legal. Frameworks for Future Deployments Why the Milestone Matters On its face, a test flight is an engineering event, a carefully choreographed verification of systems. In strategic terms, it signals several broader trends. First, it underscores the Pentagon's commitment to integrating autonomy across air operations. Second, it validates the startup model for defense innovation, rapid prototyping, iterative testing, and the aim of moving quickly from lab to fleet. Third, the demonstration feeds a growing industry competition to field survivable, networked systems for contested environments, especially in the Indo-Pacific region where distances are long and adversary capabilities are advanced. Reuters quoted an Air Force official who framed the milestone as an example of how competition speeds delivery. Technical Highlights, Design and Capabilities The Fury's external appearance is familiar to anyone who studies modern military aviation, a small, swept-wing, jet-powered airframe with no cockpit and a configuration optimized for speed, signature reduction, and payload flexibility. Because the prototype is designed as a loyal wingman, its critical features emphasize networking, sensor fusion, and modular mission payloads. These aircraft are intended to carry sensors for intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, electronic warfare packages to shape the battlefield, and potentially kinetic weapons while operating in coordination with manned jets. Enduro's public statement emphasized flight control autonomy and the firm's intention to scale manufacture. A crucial aspect of modern uncrewed systems is the balance of autonomy and human oversight. Enduro described the YFQ-44A as semi-autonomous, able to manage low-level flight and basic maneuvers without constant human joystick inputs, but still subject to mission-level human control. This supervised autonomy fits current legal and doctrinal norms and addresses ethical concerns about removing humans from critical kill chain decisions. The distinction matters because full autonomy in lethal targeting remains a political, legal, and operational red line for many defense establishments. NATO allies and international partners watch such developments closely, with policy debates ongoing about where to draw those lines. Production and Industrial Implications Enduro's announcement included plans to ramp up production, with manufacturing expected to begin in Ohio the following year. That move reflects a larger pattern, defense startups increasingly plan domestic production lines to deliver at scale. For the Air Force, a supplier base capable of rapid production is critical, 
both for equipping forces and for sustaining competition in procurement. If Enduro can transition from prototype testing to serial production, it will mark a significant shift in the industrial base, newcomers competing for roles traditionally dominated by established primes. In parallel, other firms such as General Atomics, Shield AI, and international competitors are advancing their own prototypes, creating an atmosphere of technological competition that the Pentagon explicitly seeks to leverage. Operational Concepts – How Loyal Wingmen Might Be Used In operational terms, CCAs are intended to expand the reach and survivability of air campaigns. In high-threat environments, manned platforms are vulnerable to advanced anti-air weapons, a distributed mix of manned and unmanned aircraft complicates enemy targeting and permits new tactics. Loyal wingmen can conduct riskier ISR missions, provide electronic attack standoffs, absorb initial defensive fire, or act as sensor nodes to extend a manned fighter's situational awareness. Strategists see these systems as force multipliers, they do not replace pilots, but augment decision space and margin for action. The Pacific Theater with its geographic scale and evolving anti-access-slash-area denial threats, is often cited as a key driver for this technology. Policy and Ethics, the Governance Question As the technology matures, policy choices will shape its use. The U.S. Department of Defense has established frameworks for human-in-the-loop and human-on-the-loop control, emphasizing human responsibility for lethal actions. But as autonomy grows, accountability and export controls become pressing concerns. Allies will want shared norms to limit misuse, while adversaries may pursue unconstrained development. International arms control discussions, though historically slow, may soon encompass cooperative agreements on autonomous systems, otherwise, a technology arms race could escalate rapidly and create strategic instability. The public conversation will likely intensify as prototypes move into production and field trials become operational deployments. Enduro's flight is also a snapshot of the post-9-11, post-procurement era, venture capital, Silicon Valley talent, and commercial engineering practices converge with defense needs. Companies like Enduro leverage software cycles, continuous testing, and modular design to iterate faster than traditional defense contractors. This model offers benefits, speed, agile development, and fresh talent, but also poses integration challenges when aligning with complex systems of systems in the military. Procurement reform and supply chain robustness remain top priorities for defense planners seeking to operationalize prototypes at scale. Allies historically welcome allied capability, but also seek interoperability standards and rules of engagement. Partners such as Australia, the UK, Japan, and South Korea watch closely for opportunities to collaborate or to ensure their own industrial capacities. Potential adversaries, meanwhile, invest in countermeasures. Long-range surface-to-air systems, cyber interventions, and electronic warfare that can blind or confuse uncrewed swarms. The introduction of semi-autonomous jet drones therefore reshapes both force posture and counterforce strategies. The U.S. government will need to combine capability development with doctrine, training, and allied diplomacy to realize the technology's advantages without precipitating destabilizing competition. Case Studies and Hypotheticals Consider a simple operational vignette, a six-ship package consisting of two manned fighters and four CCAs approaches a contested island. The CCAs advance to survey and suppress air defenses. When threat levels rise, the manned fighters process high-fidelity data fed by the CCAs and engage with greater safety. The CCAs can loiter, relay data, and, if necessary, conduct kinetic strikes while the manned platforms handle decision-intensive tasks. These combinations increase situational awareness, reduce pilot risk, and complicate enemy responses. Such scenarios are not science fiction, they are what the CCA program intends to make routine. A mass deployment of uncrewed jets requires economics, procurement costs, sustainment, training, and integration with legacy systems must be manageable. If Enduro and other firms can bring production costs down through modular design and commercial supplier chains, the economics could favor broader adoption. Both in the U.S. and among allies. Export controls, however, 
will govern transfer, especially for sensitive autonomy and sensor packages. The U.S. must balance commercial interests and national security needs as it shapes the regulatory frameworks for production and sale. The prototype flight is an early step. Future work will focus on air-to-air -air coordination, secure communications in contested environments, disaggregated command and control, and robust electronic protection techniques. Integrating artificial intelligence into mission processing will continue, but safety, and human oversight, remain primary constraints. Companies will need to demonstrate not only capability but also resilience in degraded operating environments where GPS, data links, and sensors are contested. Enduro's YFQ-44A first flight is both technological milestone and strategic message. It represents the Pentagon's commitment to blend autonomy with human judgment, the industrial pivot to faster development cycles, and the operational reimagining of air power for contested spaces. As prototypes move toward limited production and field testing, policymakers, militaries, and the public will confront new choices about how to harness these systems responsibly. If the last decade showed the speed of software-driven change in defense, the next will test our ability to govern and integrate that change into sustainable, ethical, and strategically stabilizing force structures. We'll continue to track flight testing, procurement decisions, allied cooperation, and policy debates as this program evolves. For viewers interested in the intersection of technology, policy, and national security, the YFQ-44 as first flight is a development worth following closely.